Most people would dismiss such a claim as madness, and I almost did exactly that. But there was something strangely enchanting about her voice, and I found myself slowly drawn into her tale, listening intently to her every word. The more I heard, the harder it was to believe she was lying, and before long I was convinced she was the daughter of God, a saint whose blood had miraculous powers. Her first cry ended a lengthy drought in the village where she was born, and her blood cured the sick. She rolled up one sleeve to show me her arm. Practically every inch of skin from her shoulder to the tips of her fingers was scarred from where she had been cut. According to her, the scarring had once been far worse, but had improved with the application of ointment. Every single one of those scars, she said, Marked a person who had sought her blood, and I believed every word. There was something about her that set her apart from the rest of us normal people, like she was some higher being. They were not self-inflicted wounds, not the mark of someone who had tried to take her own life, but symbols of the great sacrifices she had made. She offered to, offered to give Nellie her blood, and without a moment's hesitation I accepted. Hey, Nelly, I'm back. And they brought someone with me. A saint. A uh, saint? Yep. She's here because medicine hasn't been working for you. She can perform miracles, so she's going to cure you. M miracles? That's right. Her blood has miraculous healing powers. Blood? Fear not, my beloved sister. Hear my words and do as I say. You must have faith for the miracle to be performed correctly. I give you my blessing that I may bestow unto you salvation. I give you my love and I give you relief. Hear my words. I hear them. This body was created not in a mortal womb. This flesh is not the flesh of man. This blood is not the blood of man. The water that flows through these holy veins flows from the river of creation. Have mercy on them, O Father. May the infirm find comfort in your warmth. May the destitute find reprieve in your generosity. May my flesh bring nourishment and health unto this girl. Bestow upon her your blessing, O Father. Morgana held a pale hand above Nellie's mouth and without hesitation sliced her own wrist. Blood slowly trickled down her middle finger from the cut, dripping into the gap between Nellie's bluish lips. I stood there entranced by the scene. It was like I was witnessing some kind of ritual. I wasn't sure, however, whether to describe it as sacred or profane. Watching the fresh blood trickle from the cut on her wrist made me break out into a sweat, feeling like I was violating a taboo. My knees rattled and I could barely stay on my feet. Needles prickled my hands, thoughts slipped through my fingers before they could fully form. Had I crossed a line that wasn't meant to be crossed? Had I stepped into territory man was never supposed to enter? In time, I stopped processing Morgana's prayers as words. It became nothing but a rhythmical sequence of sounds bouncing around in my head. My line of sight grew gradually narrower. Wait. What? Uh. Are you all right? The ceremony is complete. 
Uh, uh, how it's Nelly. She is asleep right now, but she should awaken soon. Uh oh, good. My blood has the power to cause miracles, but you must remember that the miracles predicted on your face. So are you saying we need to worship you? No, I am merely God's progeny. Your praises and prayers should be directed at my father, the Lord God. I should get going then. Hey, uh... Thank you. Very much. When Morgana had said I would never be able to understand or empathize with her, she had not been lying. Having only heard her tell of it, I'd still believe there was room for me to close the gap between us. That we still had enough in common. But seeing it with my own eyes, feeling it with my entire being, I no longer had any illusions of us being on the same plane. As I gave her my thanks, my voice was audibly trembling. Now, come on, get up, dear smell. Mm. Oh, Mel! Nelly. <laughs> Finally, you're awake, sleepyhead. What's with the look? Am I making a funny face? Are you good to be up and about? Yep, I woke up this morning feeling wonderful. Feel my forehead, Mel. See? No fever. It is... It's gone. She actually performed a miracle. I only remember bits and pieces, but I remember a really pretty saint lady showing up and giving me her blood. And that's how she remembers it. Her memory is pretty hazy, huh? And then I got this warm and fuzzy feeling inside me. Then I had this really strange dream. What kind of dream? There were a whole bunch of lights floating all around me, and they were changing into all sorts of different colors. It was the most wonderful dream. <laughs> that doesn't help me understand at all, Nelly. It was a good dream, and that's what matters. It must have been the saint's lady's power at work. Must be, yeah. I'm so relieved you're feeling better, Nelly. Sorry for all the trouble I caused you. But now everything can go back to normal. Yep, all back to normal. She wants to thank me. Yeah, Nelly's insisting I let her meet you so you can show her gratitude. So she can show her gratitude. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's all right, would you mind coming to supper sometime? That would probably not be wise. Huh? Why not? It would hardly be pleasant having to eat in the presence of a face as grotesque as mine. And I doubt your sister would react well to the sight of it. I don't think it would cause any problems. Nelly isn't the kind of girl to judge someone by their looks, I don't think. Perhaps not, but to her, I'm a saint, not a normal person. In her mind, she thinks I'm beautiful, doesn't she? We must maintain that illusion. It is essential to the miracle that her faith remains unwavering, and on some level that faith depends on her idealized image of you think so? Though our time together was brief, I could see it in her. She is a girl with a great love of beauty. And perhaps the same could be said of you. I don't judge people by how they look. It's what's inside that matters. I'll take you at your word. Thanks. So, uh... Are you sure you don't want to come? I really shouldn't. I'm terribly sorry. 
Oh, okay. Why in the world am I feeling relieved? Nelly recovering was a huge weight off my shoulders. Not everything could go back to the way it was. Now everything could go back to the way it was, quiet and unremarkable. I could finally go out and get a real job, forget about my old life, live like a regular old commoner. That was what I was going to do for the both of us. The problem was, Nelly hadn't actually recovered completely. She was in nearly perfect health the first few days after drinking Morgana's blood. But soon after, her fever came back. She stopped being able to get out of bed, and to top it all off, she started having lengthy coughing fits. During some of them, she coughed up little bits of bloody phlegm. I nearly had a panic attack. So I rushed down to Morgana's cottage and told her what was happening, to which she responded with a quizzical tilt of her head. Nellie's health meant everything to me. It certainly wasn't the curiosity her health tilt seemed to make it out to be. But it didn't seem to bother her at all. The miracle took place, but it didn't persist. That doesn't make much sense. But it's true, she can't get out of bed. And it's not a problem with her faith. I've been teaching her the word of God every night. And she absolutely believes in you, in her saint. Lower your voice. I'll perform another miracle for her. You... You'll do it again? I will not forsake those who are in need. And... It'll stick this time, right? I cannot promise anything. But why? Your miracles aren't supposed to be temporary, are they? Whether they are or not is decided by you and your sister. You're my only hope, though. Please do not worry. If a second blessing is not enough to cure her of her ailment, then I will visit and give her my blood as many times as is necessary. I would gladly give her every last drop of blood in my body. I assure you, my father does not want to see two young souls like yourselves torn apart. And neither do We should get going. Oh, all right. For the second time, Morgana had Nelly drink of her blood. And for the second time, she was healthy again the next morning. And for the second time, she fell, fell, fell ill again shortly thereafter. Her fever returned. I went to get Morgana, and she gave Nelly her blood. The cycle repeated again and again. And every time I had to watch her go through that ceremony, it was... it was exhausting. And I wasn't sure I could handle it much longer. I started thinking maybe there wasn't anything sacred about any of this. That it was as blasphemous as it looked from the outside. I was making a girl cut her own wrist and feed my sister her blood. Nothing about that sounded right. But I had nowhere else to go. No one to ask for help. When I was with Morgana... Listening to her words of reassurance, she, were, she, without fail, wiped away all doubts I had. It wasn't until after she left that the wave of regret hit me. I wasn't sure what was right and wrong anymore. I wasn't sure what to do anymore. Every time I went to see Morgana, it got more and more difficult to look her in the eye. I stopped asking her on walks as often, and I stopped trying to have chats with her. Not so much out of a sense of guilt, but because I was getting to be afraid of her. Hmm. One of those draining days, someone knocked on the door. I hadn't asked Morgana to come down that day, so I wasn't sure who it could be. 
Nellie was asleep in her bed, so I quietly rose from my seat and my, made my way to the door, trying not to wake her. Who is it? Hello? Who's there? I had an inkling of a suspicion, but having been raised in such a sheltered environment, I didn't understand exactly how dangerous it was to thoughtlessly open the door to anyone who came knocking. I pulled the door inward a couple inches and tried to take a peek through the crack. Huh? When out of nowhere, someone grabbed my shoulder and shoved me, helpless to resist, into the house. A man stood there above me. Oh! Wow! Damn! Damn, Yukimasa! <laughs> what do you think you're doing? What do you want from me? Uh, I don't have anything valuable. I I'm just a regular old peasant. I am not here to rob you. What? You are in contact with the witch, are you not? Uh-huh. The girl who lives by the lake calls herself a witch. Witch? I... I don't know any witch. The only one who lives there is a saint. A saint? I was told she was a witch. But regardless, there's a girl who lives there with miracle blood, no? Uh... Looks like I've got the right person. What? What do you want from me? I want you to help me. Huh. I need you to lure the witch out. And why do you need that? Because I need her blood. I need to get my hands on the witch's miracle blood. <laughs> then go ask for it yourself. Why should I have to help you? She won't open the door for me. But you, I've seen you talking to her. You seem to be quite friendly with the witch. <gasps> Taking little walks around the lake. How... I need your help. And what? What are you going to do once you have... Once you have her outside? I have orders from the Lord to take her captive. What? The Lord? Why would he... That is none of your concern. Y you expect me to buy that? All I need from you is to get the witch out of that house. Why would I... She doesn't trust me. I could always force my way in, but there's a chance something might go wrong and I can't risk that. If she hears your voice, she'll open the door, yes? The witch trusts you, unlike me. With your help, there's no risk of anything going wrong. I... No, I... You barge in here and tell me you want to capture her, and you think I'm just going to agree to help? Like hell I will! Oh, don't worry. You'll get your share. You need the witch's blood too, right? I don't care about getting a share. You're... You're asking me to deceive her! I don't care what you think she is. She hasn't done anything wrong. So no, I won't help you capture her. You leave me no choice, then. Ooh, uh... Yeah, I thought it was going to be something like this. <sighs> yeah, you predicted it, too. He approached the bed where Nellie slept, drawing his sword and pressing the tip against her throat. It happened so quickly and without any warning, my mind couldn't keep up. I stood there, mouth half open like an idiot. If I were courageous... If I were gallant and brave, then maybe I would have grabbed him, pulled him away from Nelly. No, that would have actually just been a stupid move, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but my legs seemed to be severed from my mind. They were frozen to the floor like two useless rocks. You have two options. 
Either you say no and protect the witch. Get away. Or you help me capture her. G get away from her right now. And if you choose the witch, I kill the girl. Get away! Make your decision. Get away from her! You have until the count of ten. If you don't choose, I kill the girl. Mm -mm. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. <sighs> six. Five. Okay, okay, I'll do it! I'll help you! So get your sword out of her face! Don't kill her! I thought you'd hold on until the last second. <sighs> well, what are you for? Let's get going. Uh, uh... Get moving. <sighs> you pitiful little boy. But you feel real proud of yourself uh, attacking children like this, Yukimasa. Oh, yeah! I felt like jumping into a lake. I couldn't make sense of how I ended up in such a position. Just a few months earlier, I had been living back at my family's estate, hardly a worry in the world. Nelly had been healthy and happy. It hadn't been exciting, no. But I had figured that was how things would always be. That one day I would fall for some noble girl. Nelly would get jealous and I would have to spend several days, or even weeks, pacifying her. Everyone would be happy, a life free of troubles. But because that was normal, and I was normal. So what was I doing living in some tiny cottage so far from home? Feeding my sick sister miracle blood? What was I doing walking beside this barbarian? What was I doing at all? I was conflicted. Part of me hoped we would never arrive at the lake. And the part of me wanted to get there as quickly as possible so I could be done with all this. But time plodded on no quicker or slower than normal. And we arrived at Morgana's door in short order, irrespective of my own selfish hopes. The thought of us, what was going to happen next filled me with a crushing sense of guilt. I may have been afraid of Morgana, but I had no grudge against her. I was actually quite grateful to her. She was still healing Nelly, even if the ceremony to do so inspired fear in me. She didn't hesitate to cut her own wrist open for Nelly, and for me. She didn't grimace or even frown, though I knew it had to hurt. I knew damned well she wasn't a bad person, that she hadn't done anything to warrant being taken into custody. She might very well have been a genuine saint. But there I was, selling her out because a man with a sword threatened me. <sighs> oh, Father, who art in heaven, please forgive me for what am I about to do. Please, please forgive me. Quit sniveling. You wanted to get suspicious. But I... You... How... I can't, you all. Please, oh god! Ah! Stop crying. <sighs> or would you rather I kill you here? Because I will. <clears throat> Just close your eyes. It'll be over before you know it. <clears throat> Do it. Call on the witch. Are you crying? No, I'm just stuffed. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's there? Um, it's me. I'm not here about Nelly today. I am... Um... 
I'm sorry for being so distant lately. I want to talk things over. I thought I heard a faint gasp through the door, and then she responded. I want to talk to you, too. Aww. Why? Why did she have to... Why did she have to want to talk now? She had always been so curt, so rational, so quick to cut down my fantasies. Never one to get emotional or sentimental. She had always given off the impression of being something greater than we mere humans. Always been so aloof, never giving any indications he thought anything of me at all. So why? Why did she sound like a normal girl now? Was her voice trembling slightly when she said she wanted to talk? Why now, of all times? Oh, so this is what she meant when the nice boy betrayed her. Mm-hmm. Oh. Oh, okay. Ooh, is he, like, stabbing her? This is when he cut her arm off. Oh! Oh, yeah! No, oh, stay away from me. <laughs> Help. Take it. What? That's your share. Should last you long enough. What? Why? Why? Why did you take my arm? What do you mean by share? Why? Why? Ah! Uh, uh, uh. It all happened in less than a minute. I told her I wanted to talk. She opened the door. And I heard a sound like the wind whipping past my ear. And the next thing I knew, her cottage was covered in blood. Never once did I expect anything to happen how it did. When he said he wanted to capture her, I took it to mean exactly that. I hadn't thought he would turn brutal. That he would do something so horrific. After the man cut her arm off, Morgano tumbled to the floor, floundering about as he watched, blood trickling down the curved blade in his hand. Her screams were indistinguishable from that of a normal person. Her arm. Her arm. Kneeling in the grass at the lake shore, I vomited, and I vomited, and I vomited. The things I had seen in the cabin were far too much for me to handle. I tossed the arm, Morgana's arm, the man had given me into the lake. What else was I supposed to do with it? It was an arm. A human arm. You'd have to go insane- you'd have to be insane to go around carrying someone's severed arm. I tried to convince myself it was all a dream, some terrible nightmare, but I could still feel the warmth of her skin fresh on my hands. The warmth of her blood on my fingers, dragging me back to reality. <laughs> my mind couldn't keep up with the flood of thoughts and emotions and images. I wanted to close my eyes, but I was too afraid I would find the blood bath in the cottage on the back of my eyelids which left me with nothing to do but wail. I was horrified at what I had done. I knew I was the one who had set it all in motion. If I had kept quiet, Morgana wouldn't have had her arm cut off. But I didn't want to admit it was my fault. I didn't want to accept that I had caused it. I... I did nothing wrong. 
It was not my fault. I was... He, he threatened me. So it was not my fault. I had no choice. I didn't do anything. I frantically scrubbed my blood-soaked clothes in the lake. As I watched the red cloud spread, I knew I was defiling something pure and beautiful, but my awareness of that fact was slowly dissipating like the blood through the clear water. By the time I'd gotten all the blood off my clothes, the sun was beginning to set. I came back to my senses at the sound of a bird chirping, and quickly recalled that I had left Nelly alone at the house. My legs were shaking and I could barely keep myself upright, but I remember her, remembering her gave me enough motivation to drag myself back home. If she hadn't been there waiting for me, I seriously might have thrown myself into the lake instead. Mel? What's the matter, dear Smell? Where have you been? Mel? I'm so sorry. What? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so, so sorry. <laughs> when a guy and a girl go at it, it shortens the lives of the people who have to watch it happen, too. That's why I don't watch porn. <laughs> <laughs> and since it's me saying it, you know it's true. Wouldn't that mean you don't watch a straight porn? <laughs> Ooh. Wait, they have porn that doesn't involve just a man and a woman? <laughs> Let me show I've... you a wonderful world. I've been avoiding porn f all this time? <laughs> and I didn't need to? <laughs> you're, you're Hurry welcome. And make it better. I can show Get your you the tea. world. She transfer going on positive. Shining, loop. slippery, wet. Stop. <laughs> wow. Why? Why? Every now and then, Coco, you really surprise me when you, you pull something uh, surprisingly graphically sexual. Same. <laughs> It reminds Wait, me of... Wait, what does this have to do with carpet? Oh, I'll tell you. Uh...